what I'm going to do is just randomly popcorn through each of you and ask you questions about the function we are looking at. So in number one, I'll start us off and then I'll kind of, you know, like I said, popcorn through you. We have y is greater than one. So what I would anticipate you to look for is, okay, what is the slope? What is the y-intercept? Well, in the case of this line, there is no x, which means my slope is 0. The y-intercept is the point where it crosses the y-axis. So in this case, my y-intercept is 1. So I have a slope of 0, y-intercept of 1. The inequality is greater than, but not equal to. So my line is dashed. And y is greater than, so above. So we're going to make a dashed line through 0, 1. That has no slope, which means it's horizontal. And then it's greater than, so we are going to shade above. Okay, so to start us off, Calvin, give me one point that would be a solution to the graph in number one. Give me a point that would be a solution. Okay, so he says 2, 0. So 2, 0 would be down here. Is that in my shaded region? What? Yep. Okay, so he realized what he said and I graphed it. Okay, whoops. We wanted to go with 0, 2. So a solution would be 0, 2. Questions, comments, concerns? Everybody okay with what we put up? All right, then. Number two. And I'm picking on you just using like a dice spinner back here on my calculator. And then it goes based off of like your um, phone number. Okay. So, ch -ch -ch, not here. Let's do it again. All right, Hunter, what is the y-intercept in my graph for number two? Good. So the y-intercept is two. So you plot your point at zero, two. Okay, Lucas, what is my slope? Perfect. So my slope is 1, so we're going to go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, down 1, left 1, down 1, left 1. Okay. Aaliyah, is my line solid or dashed? Excellent. Okay, and then Emma, do I shade above or below? What, honey? Perfect. So we're going to shade below because y is less than. Okay, and then Dylan, can you give me a solution to this graph? A solution to the graph of number two. Excellent. One, one is a solution because it is in my shaded region. Ow. Very good. Okay, and number three, this graph is in standard form. 
So to make our life a little bit easier, we're going to subtract x to the other side so that the y value is isolated. So you have y is less than or equal to negative x plus 4. Okay, well, what is my y-intercept? Excellent. So we plot our starting point at 0, 4. Okay, then, is my line solid or dashed? Good. Okay, Leanna, am I going to shade above or below? Awesome. And then, Faith, what is the slope of that line? Good, my slope is negative 1, so we're going to go down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. So, as Van told us, my line is solid, and as Leanna said, it is below. Okay, Lauren, give me a point that is a solution. Awesome. Zero, zero is in my shaded region, therefore zero, zero is a solution. Okay, once again, in number four, we need to get y on the left and the other stuff on the right. So all we're going to do is flip this entire graph. So you have y greater than x plus 3 so that I can see my graph completely flip. Where the y is on the left, now I can follow the shading, etc. Okay, Matt, is my line solid or dashed? Yeah. Awesome, so I have a dashed line. Okay, Phil, is my line going to be shaded above or below? Awesome. And then, Sophia, what is my y-intercept? Awesome, so we start our graph at 0, 3. My slope is 1. It's dashed and above. Okay. Let's go with is the point Negative 3, 0, a solution. Is negative 3, 0, a solution? Got it, Alexis. No, it is not a solution. Why is it not a solution? Because my line is... Why is it not a solution? Anybody know? Okay, Madison? Yeah, since my line is dotted, no points on the line are solutions. So negative 3, 0 is not a solution because it is on the line, and the points on the line for this graph are not solutions. Okay, number 5, rearrange your terms. So in order to do that, we have to add or subtract. So we're going to subtract 2. So I have negative y is less than negative 2 being subtracted from x. My y value cannot be negative, though, so we divide everything by negative 1, which changes the direction of the inequality. So you now have y greater than x divided by negative 1 becomes negative x. And negative 2 divided by negative 1 becomes positive 2. Okay, Nick, is my line solid or dashed? Awesome. And, okay, how about, I need another number. Madison, is my line shaded above or below? Excellent. OK, 
Okay, and then let's go with Kaylee. Is my what is my y intercept? Awesome. So my y intercept is at two. My slope is negative one. So we go down and over. As Nick told us, my line is dashed. And as Madison told me, I should above. Okay, and then Kylie, give me a solution. So she says one, two, one, two, three. That is excellent. And in my shaded region, therefore a solution. Okay, Chris, in number six, is my line solid or dashed? Awesome. Okay, Jacqueline, are we shading above or below? Fantastic. Okay, Matt, what's my slope? Good, and Sam, what is my y-intercept? Fantastic. Okay, so you plot your point zero, zero, apply your negative slope, make that line solid, and shade above. All right, let's go through this way. Is the point 5-5 five, five a solution? Yes or no, Lucas? 5-5. Five, five. Perfect. Okay, is the point 0-0 zero, zero a solution? Will. Okay, yes, because the line is solid, so that is a solution. Good. Okay, number seven, solve for y. So you're going to subtract x. So you get negative y greater than negative x minus 2. Divide everything by negative 1. Flip your inequality. Aaliyah, what's my slope? Excellent. Okay, so my slope is 1. Okay, Faith, what's my y-intercept? Good. Okay, Hunter, solid or dashed? And Emma, above or below? Good. Any questions or concerns on graphing linear inequalities? Okay, flip your hand out over. We're going to go jump to 8 and 9 because those are absolute values. So, what is my vertex? What is my vertex in number 8? What is my vertex? Anybody want to tell me? Oh, nice. Okay, Lucas, I saw you go up first. Fantastic. Solid or dashed? Uh, Matt? Fantastic. Let's graph this. So in order to graph this, I need my slope. What's the slope of this absolute value, Madison? Perfect. My slope or my A value is 1. So we're going to go up one, right one. But if we go up one and right one from the vertex, we also have to go up one and left one from my vertex. And the next most important question, am I shading in the absolute value or 
out of the absolute value. So you want to look at like the vertex and y is greater than. So if this is my vertex, where are the y values bigger? Above that or below it, Aaliyah? Above. So that means we're shading inside the absolute value. Okay, and then number nine, I have y is greater than negative three, absolute value x plus one minus two. So what is my vertex? What's my vertex? Go ahead, Alexis. Excellent. And what is the A value or the slope of this graph? Aaliyah? Negative 3. Okay, what haven't I heard from in a while? Is it solid or dashed? Also tell me solid or dashed. Sophia? Good. All right, let's apply everything we just talked about. Let's plot our vertex. My graph is negative 3 for a slope, so it's going to be open down. Are we shading in or out? What do you think? Alia? Sorry. Her book fell right as you said it out. Excellent. Now I have a question. Is the vertex negative one, negative two a solution? Is the vertex, all right, well, you immediately shook your head. No, why not? Fantastic. So even though this is my vertex and where I start my graph, that vertex is not a solution because my line is dashed. So what I want to do is take the next couple minutes and work on the word problem at the bottom of the page. But I want you to start this one a little bit on your own. So we'll read it out loud, highlight some information, and then I want you to try to get your inequality. I'm going to walk around and check it. Remember, when you're graphing it, it's easiest to graph the x and y intercepts. So it says a school system is buying new computers. They're buying desktop computers at $1,000 per unit and notebook computers at $1,200 per unit. What is the total? If the total cost cannot exceed $80,000, how many can they buy? So we'll say that desktop is X because they already gave me that on my graph. So if you're going to use X and Y, you want X to be desktop and Y to be the notebooks. And then you need to write an inequality that involves their cost. basic idea really well where I saw one or two mistakes 
was we missed putting the cost on our X and Y. So when you do this, you have to put the $1,000 with the X, the 1200 with the Y, and then we saw that it cannot exceed 80,000. So what that means is that the cost at 100 or 1000 X plus 1200 Y has to be less than or equal to 80,000 because I cannot spend more than 80,000. To graph this, I said the best thing to do is to graph your X and Y intercepts. So what that means is we're going to graph the point when X equals zero and graph the point when Y equals zero. So by graphing those two points, you can graph your points on this X and Y axis. So if X is zero, we get 1200 Y equals 80,000 or y equals, and again, you could just take your calculator and do 80,000 divided by 1,200, and you get 66.6. So you're going to plot that point here, and then you do it again when y is 0. So now you have 1,000x equals 80,000, and you get x equals 80. So you plot your point at 80, and then you just connect the dots. And would we be shading above or below? What do you think, Madison? Yeah, it's below because we can't exceed that cost, which means I can't buy more computers beyond that. So then it asks the question, if the school wants to buy 50 desktop, so that's X equals 50, and 25 notebooks, so that's like y equals 25. Do they have enough money? So you have two choices. You could go to the graph and go to 50, 25, but that's kind of iffy because our line's not perfect. So if you weren't sure from the graph, you could also plug into your inequality. So it'd be like 1,000 times 50 plus 1,200 times 25, and you would want to see if that cost is less than or equal to 80,000. And we get 80,000 on the dot. Does 80,000 exceed 80,000? No. So they can purchase that many. Will they have enough money? Yes, they will, because the point is on the line, and the line is solid. All right. So you have no homework tonight. Your homework is really just to go over, review, study, and make sure you are prepared for tomorrow. Looking at that handout, does anybody have any questions for me? Um, I will post on Teams like the answer key to the ones we didn't do in class today. So I will post that probably at the end of ninth period just because I don't teach my other version till ninth. Um, your homework and all of that are excellent review resources for tomorrow's quiz.